I'm going to begin, uh, guys, by just asking what it was that initially drew you into the project here, The Secret of Marabone. It was the the concept and the story um, and the people behind the film, basically, um, Sergio and Belen and, and the films that they've been associated with and worked on before. Um, when I first auditioned, there, there was I didn't have a script to read, so it was in the actual room that, that Sergio explained how everything unfolds, and I just thought that it was fascinating. So it was it was that really. Exactly what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the first film you've directed for the mm -hmm. for the big screen. I mean, what's it like seeing your work up on the big screen in a room full of people? I mean, that must be kind of an, an in, quite an overwhelming experience, I guess. Um, Yes and no, um, because it, it, I always say that I, I, I try to, to write and now make the, the type of film that I would love to watch in the cinema. And, and the curse of it is that you don't really get to watch it as everybody else will, will see it. You know, it's like you've, you've spent almost a year of your life uh, writing, putting those uh, images on the screen and then the editing process is so long that it's very hard to watch the film from the outside. So I think it's like uh, you really need to wait for a couple, uh, a year or two, get gain some distance from the film, to to really see it for what it is. But uh, yeah, it's it's always exciting when you get in a in a room with people who haven't seen the film and, and see what's going to happen. And and it's always surprising because I I don't really think of Marabone as a horror movie. And then when you see it uh, with an audience and you see how they sort of like. like start like going down in their seats and trying not to watch and they scream and they and all the emotions that the film gets out of the of the audience are always a wonderful surprise to witness it's pretty freaky i mean when you when you're watching it back are you guys able to kind of get caught up in it in the same way an audience member would and and fall for all the kind of tropes of the horror genre obviously it's not i wouldn't call it defined as a horror genre but it still kind of plays it taps into that or is that kind of impossible when, when you're in the movie and you kind of know it inside out no, I, I definitely did. Um, and I think that's um, all due to Sergio and the people in post-production that did such a great job at um, cutting it the way they did. Um, it was far scarier watching it than actually um, doing it on the day. And, and it really felt like, um, yeah, like I was watching it for the first time. Um, it's interesting you say that about it because I mean the hereditary director Ari Aster has also recently said he sees his movie not being as much of a horror but being a kind of family drama. Mm -hmm. Now you often get that with this genre. You get filmmakers often like to to make a real point of saying this is not just a horror. Why do you think it is with the horror genre filmmakers do feel inclined to to quickly not see it to be labelled as as being just that? Well, f for me in particular, it, it, it feels like a, uh, a responsibility to the hardcore horror fans. Because <laughs> I, I grew up watching films like um, those type of, of horror films in festivals like, like Sitges or Gérard May. And, and I know that if, if you go into the film uh, expecting that kind of, of experience, you're going to be let down. You have to know that you're going into something else. It, yes, it isn't part horror film, it's, it's a suspense movie, but there's more to it. It's, it's, so, so to me, it's, it's not like sort of like trying to elevate the film above horror. It's yeah. just a, a warning to the audience because I think a, a, a film like this, uh, uh, I mean, your react, what you get out of it depends on your expectation. So, so you need to know that you're going to see a very special film that mixes several genres, and that's like a puzzle that you need to put together. I mean, because it's one of those films that doesn't rely too much on dialogue. It really allows for very internalized performances. That must be so great for actors to give you that kind of freedom to to really explore your character kind of internally. It's because I guess sometimes when you're reliant on dialogue, it's all kind of laid out for you. But when it's all very much in your own head, it must give you more space to really explore who they are and really create them also in, in your own mind yeah yeah I think I think Sergio as well wanted you know wanted to give us that time I think he was he, he was so giving to everyone to every department on set as to kind of fully realize what they wanted to do with with each scene be it the way it was shot or, or how how we played it and yeah and yeah and you're right I mean sometimes it, it kind of depends on the words that you're saying actually because you know you could that's the, sometimes you be playing a scene where the fun of it is, is it's all about the subtext where, you know, you're saying something, you mean something completely different. And other times it's all, you know, you're just giving the story. So, but yeah, in, I quite, I enjoy that more yeah. internal stuff. I think uh, also you, you really got the sense from Sergio that he really trusted us mm. and, and, and the people that he, he chose to be a part of his movie. And, and as a result of that, he really um, gave us free reign to, to do what 
we wanted and, and that felt really good. And I mean, the Spanish have a great relationship with horror. I mean, particularly in the last kind of like decade or so, some amazing horror movies have come from, from that region. I mean, what do you, why do you think that is at the moment? Why do you think there is this kind of wave of really great horror sort of hailing from Spain? I have no idea. And the only thing is that, I mean, I can only tell you that I, I, I it wasn't always like that. When I, when I wrote The, the Orphanage, I had, uh, I had shot a, a short film three years earlier uh, than well, actually ten, no, seven years earlier than the, than the film came out. Uh, I meant to use that short film as, as my presentation card to producers so that they would let me direct it. And everyone resisted making that, that film. They thought it was, and this was before the others, before Devil's Backbone. And people kept telling me that it was a very strange mixture of melodrama and horror and those two genres could not mix. So it was very hard to, to put that film together and it was a huge surprise when, when, when we got that wonderful reaction from the audience. Uh, and yes, after that, it, but it's like simultaneously we were doing that film and Amenabar was doing the others and Guillermo was doing his uh, uh, Spanish fantasy Civil War movies. And suddenly it's like everywhere there was like this uh, blossoming of emotional horror. And, and I have no idea because I, I don't think, uh, I think each of us was working separately. I, I, I don't know why this, uh, this came out at the same time. Because I literally just interviewed him and he was such a nice guy. I mean, how much, that must count for so much in this industry. I think so many, obviously there's always characters and stories and stuff like that, but you must just meet a director and speak to them about their projects and that passion and their kind of just um, affability must just come through sometimes and just make you go, yeah, I'd, I'd like to spend, I don't know, eight weeks working with you. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, I read the script and, and I, I loved it and then I met Sergio and I was just like, just complete, excuse me, just completely taken by him and I just thought like his soul. Yeah. Like he's just like the sweetest, kindest human. <laughs> When you were writing this, did you know right from the offset it was going to be a film you would eventually direct? And if so, do you think that changed the way you approached it? Or did you still treat it just like you would any other screenplay if you were writing for, for no, another filmmaker? I, I knew it. Well, I, I wrote three films that were hugely, hugely successful in Spain. The Orphanage, mm -hmm. the, the Impossible, and, and Palm Trees in the Snow, which hasn't opened here. And so I knew I was finally in the position to, to sort of stick myself to the script. It's like, there's, nobody else is going to shoot this. Um, uh, but also, what I, I, I sort of cheated because I, I knew the film was much more complicated than they, they were perceiving it to be. They, they, they basically wanted another orphanage and I, I, I sneak in something else. <laughs> There's a, this is more a, a family drama and it's a, very, it's a very emotional story. And so, so yes, I, I knew I was going to make it. and. Uh, and it was it was a lot of fun because when you write a script, I, I never think of a screenplay as a finished product. It's a, it's a, it's al almost like a blueprint or a map so that other people will bring their talent to to make the, the film, which is the, the final thing. And writing for some other director always feels like uh, making all the preparations to a party that you you're not invited to. <laughs> so this time I got to eat the cake and dance till the last <laughs> song, and it, it, it was fun. But almost I I there was a point where I I missed that I there were somebody else who would be the writer on set because you almost feel like you, you need that bouncing board uh, to there's a moment if you're writing and director there's so many questions everyone's making you that you sort of like fear that you're gonna lose uh, your tone or your balance and it's it, it's tense but um, it, the, my story is very much like the one in, in of Jack in the movies like uh, I have this wonderful memory of uh, of this of that shoot, and I think it's, it was something beautiful and, and precious, although the the other half of my brain knows it was hard and very <laughs> and very horrible. <laughs> and just uh, just very quickly before I go, you shot two endings, I believe. I just is that, I just wondering if the alternate ending will be available for audiences at any point on like a DVD or anything like it's, that. It's it's not so much that I shot two endings; is that we shot the ending that was on the script, and it didn't work. And uh, we shot that on, on the third week and I was very worried. I, I, I didn't want to go with that, just that one option to the editing room. So we shot another ending on the last week, which is the ending that's in the, in, in the film. And, and also I think there's a, the story gets around that there are, many, there, there are multiple endings. There, there was a different prologue. 
uh, sorry, a, a different epilogue for the film. And we shot that, and that's in the extras in the in the Blu-ray, so you can you can see it all there. And there's uh, there's lots of stuff that we shot that didn't make it to the final film, but when the film comes out in Blu-ray and DVD, you can see it all. And of course, oh, do you guys play siblings? I'm just wondering because everyone always goes on about chemistry in movies, very much from a kind of romantic point of view. It's always about how uh, you know two people share that kind of on-screen uh, chemistry in that regard, but. We don't really talk about it much when it comes to like family. I mean, is that, is that quite, how do you go, go about achieving that as a kind of group? Did you have to spend much time getting to know each other before the sort of set? Because I guess with family members, the chemistry is very ingrained, isn't it? That kind of connections we show is almost, um, there's almost a shorthand between sort of siblings. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th I think, well, I think we were very lucky. We just hit it off very quickly. And um, we, we did spend time. We had about two weeks rehearsal um, and we would... I mean, we were all staying literally in the rooms next door to each other along the hallway where we were staying as well. And we spent, you know, yeah. m most of our time together offset. And I think you kind of lean in towards certain feelings more than others. Like, I remember, like, I'd always tell Charlie off because he'd be playing his music too loud <laughs> and too late at night. And you, you try and do things that are more, you feel, appropriate to your character in, in the movie. Right. And you've both got some really exciting projects coming up. George, a quick word on, on the true history of the Kelly Gang. I mean, that, has that started shooting yet, or is that still in pre-production? No, no, it's pre-production, so we, we head off into that in the next couple of weeks. I mean, you must be so excited. I mean, to not, I mean it's an incredible cast, but also Justin Curzel. I mean, he's an incredible person to work with as well. Aye, ah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled, really. Yeah. And me, obviously, is uh, Suspiria with, with Luca. Uh, um, it looks slightly different to Call Me By Your Name. Uh, how do you fit into that particular story? What can we expect from that one? Well, I don't really know how much I can talk about that right now, but um, I, I, play, I play Sarah, and um, I, I did uh, just see it very recently, and um, I'm so proud of it, and I, and I think people will uh, really enjoy it. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. Much appreciated. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.